as you're one of the front runners for the MVP award, you and Gail, Alex, Shea Gilders, Alexander, you guys are from the same draft class. Can you talk about the type of things you guys are able to do in terms of carrying the future of this league and also how non-American players are again all the front runners for the MVP race? I mean, yeah, uh, just uh, he's an amazing player. Uh, I was watching him, and, you know, with a back. It's, he's a great guy, uh, but the things he's doing on the court, it's amazing. Uh, but, you know, maybe not American. Uh, there's a lot of great players, uh, but there's still a lot of great American players, so uh, I think this league is stacked with uh, talent right now. P.J. scored 10 of you guys for 16 points tonight. Was it considered effort to get him involved in the offense early in the game? Sorry? P.J., was it a considered effort to get him involved in the offense early on in the game? Yeah, um, he's been great uh, all the time. Not just uh, sometimes, you know, he don't score, um, but uh, all around he's been great for us. A uh, great addition, and just happy to be to have him on our team. Very nice birthday present for you to get the win. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what you yeah, yeah, nice present. Yes. Lucas, some of the passes you made tonight were kind of from pretty wild angles, and I think there was the one you threw from behind your head. To, uh, Tim. Three in front of your bench. None of the guys on the bench got up. Do you think they're bored watching some of the things you make? Oh, they didn't get up? No, no, I got to talk to them. You <laughs> I, I, I got to talk to them. No, I think they I, I don't know. You know, they see me practice some of these things in in practice. Uh, so uh, maybe they used to. I don't know. But for sure they got up. How much time have you guys been thinking about the way last night's game? Well, zero. Uh, that's like I said. That's the beauty of NBA. You know, you, you get another chance the next day. Uh, obviously, back to back with us, but uh, you just gotta keep on going. Uh, do you consider 25 a milestone birthday? Do you oh. consider 25 a milestone birthday? What that means? Like uh, bigger than most birthdays. Uh, I don't know. I feel like 40, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Where you get the 60? Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, a lot of games, a lot of minutes, a lot of professional basketball. Well, you called this a, a big character game. What did you end up seeing? Good character. Um, no, I, I thought um, the intent, the um, the energy uh, pre-game was was in the right place. I mean. Understanding we we lost on a 50 footer, it could easily. We're still thinking about that game, um, but I thought the guys moved forward, pushed. I uh, thought about Toronto, understanding they had a three game winning streak, and uh, I thought you know you look at what Exum did, you know, back in his 16 minutes, he was good. Uh, I thought um, Gafford was good, Timmy, and then uh, I thought PJ had an, another good game for us on both ends. Jason, why was it so important to get Tim and PJ and Daniel going? For like a real point of emphasis. Yeah, um, you know, just when you look at the third score, we want to, you know, try to get them going as soon as possible. And PJ, you know, I thought was aggressive right off the bat. Um, and then I thought Timmy, too, was, was really good. But I thought Gafford gave us a boost uh, in the interior. And nothing to take away from Lively. I thought he also played a good game, too. Um, but I, I thought um, our bench actually, you know, was a little bit more involved uh, in tonight's game than it was uh, last night's. It's just a normal, normal game. Triple double. Um, he was really good. Um, I guess twenty five means he's still going to be really good um, as he gets older here. But I, I, I think again, um, he played forty one minutes. Um, I think he understood where the game was at, and I think uh, you know I didn't mention Kai. I thought Kai was great. You know, off the ball with uh, Exum being able to use his speed and, and change the pace uh, to get shots. Um, but Aluka, again, um, he's our leader, um, and he was really good tonight. You know, all the games that Beaver, how Beaver was doing some basic. Yeah, I think uh, it was who, who's coming up Friday. It's uh, what happened in less than, you know, 24 hours. I think the group understood we put ourselves in a position to, to win last night. It didn't happen. Um, it's like the pitcher gives up the home run. You got to ask for the ball because uh, you got to throw another pitch. And I thought the group did a great job tonight of uh, pushing, uh, learning 
from what happened last night and then being able to turn the page and, and play a team like Toronto who's going to push, you know, our transition defense was tested tonight. And I thought the guys did a, a really good job. You mentioned getting the third score established. Uh, the other night I asked you, you know, does it need to be a specific person or does it, do you have to have a third score? And you kind of indicated that kind of like a team approach to it. Is it maybe one guy steps up one night and maybe another steps up another? Uh, how do you view that? It could be a pod. It, it could be a pod. Um, but we would like to be consistent with a third. Yes, that would make uh, a coaching or being a teammate a little bit easier of knowing who's going to be there on a consistent basis. And I think PJ is, is starting to trend that way. Um, and he's in the starting group. So that, that also helps too when you have two dynamic players like Luca and uh, Kai who are going to get 20 shots uh, to be able to see PJ come right out. And he was letting the three go and he was being aggressive. And he's doing what he's done since he's been here defensively. He's playing at a high level defensively. So if we can count on that, um, that just puts us in a different category with having three, you know, consistent scores. And then Timmy, uh, I thought, was good tonight. Uh, he's starting to get his shot back. Um, he looked good. And, again, um, Gafford giving us offensive rebounds. And then I thought D-Live was great defensively, being able to block shots or change shots. Jason, when you look at the deflections, the block shots, the steals, all that tonight, how much of that was a point of emphasis? How much is that because of the way Toronto played in transition? Yeah, I thought the uh, defense was really good. I know we gave up 123 or 25 points, but um, just looking at um, the deflections, the steals, I thought we sat down there in the third quarter um, and, and, and kind of turned the water off for them. They're a dangerous team. Uh, quickly can shoot it with the best of them, and he could score. Barrett, too. Um, and so just uh, looking at uh, the way that we play defensively transition, because we knew this was sort of like Indiana in the sense that we might be matched up with someone, but with all the switching that they do, that you can be facing someone else. And I thought the group did a really good, a really good job of talking that out. Can, can, you talk, can, you talk, can, excuse me, can you talk a little bit about Luca's def, defense specifically? It's been always a question, not his abilities, but his willingness to, to, to play defense. Well, at 25, he's starting to play defense. Um, I, I thought, he, again, um, everyone talks about his defense, but he's, uh, I think, one of the uh, smartest players on the defensive end. Um, now, we ask him to do a lot, um, and there's times maybe where, um, you know, teams might, you know, try to call him into different plays, but I think when it comes down to winning, he's going to make winning plays. Um, he is uh, one of the best players in the world. And when it comes to playing defense, he he will play defense when when the time is needed. What did you see out of Exum after, after he went to the last 13 games? Yeah, he was great. 16 minutes. Uh, I tried to run him a little stretch there in the fourth uh, without a timeout, just to you know get his win uh, as much as we're going to need him uh, on Friday. Um, but you know, again, didn't want to run his minutes uh, into the 20s yet. Um, I thought his pace, uh, his able, his ability to run the offense and get, you know, Timmy and Kai shots uh, without, you know, um, it was seamless. It seems like he hasn't been gone, but I thought he was really good tonight on both ends. Sorry. sorry. No? Uh, no, I wanted to ask you about uh, Dante Exum. How, how helpful is uh, for, uh, how helpful can be for players like Dante Exum trying out uh, the experience to, to play in Europe to to get a spot in the NBA again. Yeah, I think it's great. I think it just shows uh, it, you, you have to give credit to European basketball, too, here, um, just to understand the environment that he was playing in uh, for a championship, uh, being drafted uh, as an 18-year-old, um, to have to go to play to Europe. Uh, I, I think it helped him. Um, and you can see at the level he's playing with, with the stars that he's playing with, it's seamless. Um, his basketball IQ is high. He understands how to play the game. You don't have to run a play for him. He's about the team, and so he fits perfectly with us. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I mean, I just feel like I was getting more comfortable each and every game. Uh, obviously, my teammates are doing a good job of finding me tonight. So, I mean, I was hitting, hitting shots, so I just kept taking open looks. Did you score 10 out of her 16 points for the match? Uh, the shots were just falling, so I just try to keep shooting open ones. Um, 
it wasn't that difficult, honestly, because, I mean, you can't really uh, worry about the, the last game uh, going into the next game. Obviously, this is a good league, and um, we're playing the best players in the world each and every night. So you can't uh, harp on the last game. you got to look forward to the next one. Was there any part of tonight that was a carryover from last night because you did, you did kind of come along alive scoring late in that game? Maybe you were giving, getting into a rhythm at that point? Yeah, for me, I mean, like I said, it's just finding a rhythm and getting comfortable each and every game. And uh, I'm feeling more uh, comfortable tonight, and uh, it'll continue. So for me, just taking open shots and making them and uh, just being aggressive on both ends. How do you describe what d -Lab was able to do tonight with five block shots? He was incredible. Uh, he protected us all, all night on that end. And uh, just, I mean, being able to have a guy like that down low and even d, uh, d Gaff. So just blocking shots for our team is really good for them, and uh, I'm just glad they're on our team. Uh, yeah, yes, one question about uh, Dante Exum. Yeah, what, is, uh, what do you like the, the most from, from playing next, next to him? Uh, he's a solid point guard. He plays both ends. Uh, he talks. Uh, he does all the little things for us. And uh, we, you need a guy like that uh, to win in this league. So I'm just happy uh, he finally got to uh, play because my first game with him was tonight. So I'm just excited to uh, bond with him on the court and uh, to see how he plays and uh, how our games to play together. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say the win, so <laughs> that's all I got on was the win, so for sure. <laughs> all of them stuff for me because I'm still kind of new here, so just seeing the way he uh, breaks down the game and the way he he can pass the ball, I think it's special. Um, I don't, I haven't been able to play with anybody of his caliber, so just to see that each and every night has been incredible so far. How do you find yourself so far in mass rotation? How would you define your role and how is it to play alongside Luca and Kyrie? Um, first of all, in my role, I uh, just come out and be aggressive on both ends of the floor. Um, take open shots, uh, guard, no matter who they tell me to guard. And uh, just being able to play with those two guys is, is special. I mean, obviously they're the best two, uh, one two punch in the league, in my opinion. So just being able to uh, play off them is opens up everybody's game and um, it makes it hard for teams to guard us. What's the ceiling of this rotation? We'll see. <laughs> Thank you.